me with the six week challenge, mm -hmm. I um, went down from 91 to about 77 kilograms. So wow. I was you know, I'm really happy with that. And for me now, it's more about building muscle. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not worried about weight. It's more just keeping the body fat down and building muscle. So I, my, my muscle stayed pretty much the same throughout the six weeks. Yep. Okay, so you want to build muscle and continue to reduce body fat, but not worry so much about the weight. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. And yeah. what is your current body fat percentage? Do you know? About 23. Okay. Maybe gone up since so I haven't been able to train the ribs. So yeah, yeah cool. That. Yeah, maybe up one or two percent won't be significant. And yeah. um, when you were at 91 kilos, what was your percentage then? Was it third, about 34, 35, I think. Okay, wow, yeah, well, you've done well. Like 10% a big drop. Um, so, um, yeah, all right, cool. So the number one thing you want to get out of today is it simply uh, some clarity on, like, what should I be working on, what should I be focused on and doing to achieve that? Yeah, just training things as well as sort of the nutrition behind it. Like, Yeah, you know. cool. All right, awesome. So before I can kind of give you too many recommendations, I need to know what you're currently doing. And I know you've had two weeks off uh, training. You reckon one more week or two more weeks off training and then back into it? Um, I'm probably going to try to ease into it this week. Okay, yeah, cool. A yep. little bit this week, see what I can. Perfect. And then, yeah, hopefully the week after I'll be back in full swing. Or yeah. Close enough to it. Okay, awesome. Uh, so tell me, what do you currently eat for brekkie? Um, breakfast is can normally be some sort of meat, whatever, chicken or, or mm -hmm. beef, and then some mm -hmm. like mashed potato or vegetables. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And do you have a morning tea? Um, uh, lately I've been a bit slack on that, but um, okay. previously, yeah, it's more just having a um, protein shake, probably. Having a shake, like yeah. Cool. And by the way, um, Teresa, can you hear us again? You didn't get logged out there, Teresa. So usually Q and A would be really rapid fire kind of stuff, but today, since there's so few of us, we'll go right in depth. Okay. So yeah, um, yeah it's it's going to be awesome. All right. <laughs> uh, hey, Rose, can you hear us, Rose? Sometimes it takes a little while. Anyway, uh, all right. And typical lunch, Neil. Um, tuna and rice with vegetables oh, is probably my right. staple because it's pretty easy. That's mine as well. Tuna and rice. Do you have brown rice? Uh, no, I normally have white rice. Okay. Not a big fan of the brown rice. But Not a fan of the brown rice. Okay. Uh, afternoon tea when you're doing it properly, you're having a shake as well. Yeah, I probably if yeah if I have to go to pet in the afternoon, I'll have a shake straight afterwards. Or... Yep. Yeah, one straight when I get home. And typically when you train, it is in the afternoon? Um, oh, I mix it up. I do do mornings and the afternoon. So I try to either do a pet or a gym mm -hmm. every day. Cool. Okay. Sweet. And dinner time, similar, like meat and veg? Similar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Now, Rose, can you hear us now? Rose. All right. If you can hear us, Rose, we can't hear you. So um, there's a little chat box that you can type into or maybe try a pair of headphones if you can find a pair of headphones. It could be something to do with your microphone on your phone there. Um, okay. So uh, when it comes to building muscle, the, the thing that most people don't understand is it's easier to build muscle when you're lean. Okay. So the lower your body fat is, the easier it's going to be for you to build muscle. Now, Neil, can you still hear me? Neil, you there? No, it's dropping in and out. It's dropping in and out. Okay, but we're back now? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so uh, when it comes to building muscle, it helps to be lean. The leaner you are, the easier you're going to find to build muscle. Okay? And when I say lean, I'm talking like if you get yourself down under 15% body fat. Okay. Yeah. So it kind of goes uh, against what most people think, but the fastest way for you to build muscle will be to focus on getting lean first. 
Yeah. Right? All right. So what I will be focused on right now is doing uh, more of the boot camp style training. All right. And yeah. I'll give you a few tips on your nutrition as well that you can uh, improve to get there faster. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then once we get under 15%, then I'd be shifting the focus more to your weight-based workouts, okay? So um, Albany Creek's an interesting one because at Albany Creek, we don't have the studio yet, but in a few months' time, we will have. And what we do at our studio locations is we have this thing called Open Gym, which is perfect for people uh, like yourself who are trying to build muscle mass, okay? And it allows you to have uh, follow one of the programs that I've written, and you're able to follow it and have a trainer helping you with that. So that'll be perfect. But in the meantime, let's get lean and then we'll start working into more weight-based workouts. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. The leaner you are, the faster you're going to be able to build muscle. Okay. And that comes down to a thing called insulin sensitivity, um, which you'll become more sensitive to insulin when you are leaner. Okay. Really simply. Now, in terms of your food, is this pretty much the food that you use to get to where you are? So on your challenge, et cetera. Can you oh, hear me? Sorry, dropped out. Oh, yeah. okay. No worries. Yeah, that's all good. Yeah. The internet in Albany Creek must be... Uh, it's not great. It's a bit slow today. <laughs> yes. Hey, Nige. Good to see you, mate. All right. So uh, my question was, is that food pretty much what you use to get yourself to where you are now. So you followed that on the challenge and that's gotten you to the point where you are now. Yeah, I did the, the I was, when I did the six week challenge, I was really strict on the diet, but cool. since then I've, you know. Okay. And I've since then, has it kind of your results plateaued a little bit, slowed down? Um, yeah, it has, but yeah, I guess everything, I've done it's done that, you know, I kind of stick yeah. to the challenge sort of thing and yeah, yeah. I was flying, but then yeah, I'm gonna yeah. go back to that. So I'm gonna the thing about nutrition is um seventy seventy percent of the time, um, you know, follow general recommendations and it'll work really well for you. But there are variations in there as well. Um I'm just gonna put you on mute there, Rose, because it's just making a bit of noise, but I'll uh, sing out to you in a second. Um, so I'm going to offer you some suggestions that I believe will work for you based on helping uh, hundreds of people. And then are you happy to go and apply those things for the next four weeks and see how they go for you? Yep. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So you're going to apply them for the next four weeks and then shoot me a message on Facebook to let me know how you're going. Okay. Yep. Um, so my first suggestion <clears throat> is that you start your day with, and this is just going to help you lean out faster. Okay, have you got a pen handy, by the way? Yep. I'll just get my pen paper there again. Sweet. Okay, so the first suggestion is to steer away. Yeah, okay, Rose's mic's not working. Okay, cool. Rose, uh, if you have any questions, Rose, just type them through. Uh, for some reason, we can't hear you when you're trying to talk. Okay, Nigel, first thing is, uh, breakfast is you're going to have protein and fats and veggies, all right? Protein, fats, veggies. That means um, no carbs. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take the carbs out. So that could be an example of that could be uh, meat and nuts breakfast, which is my favorite breakfast, which is just like some kind of red meat, um, some vegetable and nuts, okay? What that does yeah. for you is two things. It controls your insulin. Okay, which is bad. So basically when insulin is high, which uh, comes when we eat carbs, our insulin shoots up. When insulin is high, fat burning is low. So first thing it does reduces insulin. Second thing that breakfast does is increases your drive. Okay, so it increases your, um, your neural drive. So um, the neurotransmitter in your brain that gives us... Um, drive or whatever you want to call it, uh, like a bit of get up and go, okay, uh, is called dopamine. And dopamine needs a thing called choline to um, be produced. And that comes from nuts and meats, red meats. Does this make sense? So, so that's yeah. one option for you, Brecky. <clears throat> Your other option would be just something like um, 
a few eggs with a bunch of veggies chucked in there. If you wanted to chuck your chicken or whatever in there, just make an omelet, something like that. Yeah. That would be your next best option. Okay. But yeah. they're the two simplest brekkies to have uh, without carbs in them. Okay. Uh, so stick with your morning tea and afternoon tea shakes. They're perfect. Um, your tuna and rice is not necessarily uh, a bad thing. It would depend when you train would be my take. So if you're training in the morning, the having the rice at lunch is going to be a good thing because you're more insulin sensitive after working out. If you're training in the yeah. evening, I would suggest you turn that into like tuna and veggies or something like that and put your rice in at night. Yeah. Okay. So basically okay. what we're going to be doing is reducing your carbs a little bit, but not eliminating them. So just keeping it to one uh, meal a day. Okay. So it's really, yeah. really, really widely understood that, um, you know, low carb is going to help you burn fat faster. Yeah. In 70 to 80% of people. But in terms of white people, it's much more than 70%. Okay. So we, our ancestry typically um, evolved on very few carbs. Does that make sense? Now you want to make, can, can you hear me now? Yep. Rose, it sounds like it's working now. Hey, yeah. Yay, we can hear you. <laughs> awesome. Good to have you on board. Uh, we got, so we've got such a small crew on here today that we're just going to be getting really specific with each person. Whereas usually Q and A is like, ask a question, get a general answer today. Uh, we're going to be more like coaching style. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, happy days, happy days. All right. So, uh, where were we now? The other thing I'd be recommending for you, Neil, make sure you got some good quality salt. So, uh, pink salt, for example. So yep. quality salt means colored salt. Colored salt is good. It's less refined. Uh, and it also has other micronutrients in it. Okay. So salt every meal and even a little bit of salt in your protein shakes. If you're working out most days, uh, chuck a bit of salt in your protein shakes. You won't even taste it, but it'll be very, very good for you. Most people are well under salted, especially when we're working out every single day. And what do you do for work? Do you have a physical job or? Office job? No, um, a um, bit more of an office job nowadays. Mm -hmm. Work in a lab and I do all the reporting okay. side of it now. So. Cool. Okay, cool. No worries. All right. Okay, does all that stuff make sense? Yeah. Now, um, if you want to speed it up even more, I'll be recommending two supplements to you. Okay. So I'll just give you always the best recommendations and then you can decide what you want to do. But the yep. two that I'd definitely be having is fish oil, okay? Yeah. And carnitine, okay? When you find it, uh, it'll be called like acetyl L carnitine. And basically, the way you do that is right now you're 23% body fat. Okay, you can hear me again. It, it seems like it dropped out for a second. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't hear the second supplement. I heard fish oh, oil. Fish oil and carnitine. Carnitine. It'll be called, when you search it up, it'll be called acetyl, A-C-E-T-Y-L, and then L-carnitine. Okay, and basically, um, what those two, th what, what fish oil is going to do is um, make you more insulin sensitive, which basically means you'll be able to burn fat more efficiently. Okay, so what you're going to do is right now you're 23% body fat, right? Now, this is going to sound extreme, but just trust me on it and do it, okay? Um, and you'll, you'll get great results, and it's not forever. Typically, uh, you know, once you get down to uh, 12 13%, you'll drop your dosages right back, okay? But until then, you take one gram of fish oil per percentage body fat, okay? So for you right now, that means 23 yeah. grams a day. Okay, which sounds like a lot, just basically 23 tablets of fish oil a day. But you're going to split that up yeah. amongst your five meals that you've got. Okay, so roughly you're going to have four a meal. At the end of each meal, you're going to have four fish oils. Okay, 
and you're going to have that with one gram of carnitine. So that's only a tiny little bit, but it'll, it'll be a powder that you'll mix into a liquid. All right. And you literally yeah. just drink that with each meal and that helps get the fish oil into the cells. Okay. So it can be used. Yeah. Right? It, it basically just makes it, it it's kind of like, um, you know, you can put petrol into your car, but if your car's not burning it efficiently, if it hasn't had a service in 10 years, half the petrol's going to get wasted, right? So it just helps it get used more efficiently and have a multiplying impact. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so that would be the two uh, supplements that I'd, I'd be definitely having that will help you speed up your results. And as your body fat decreases, your dosages of the fish oil will decrease as well. Yep. Okay, so you know, once you get down to 16, obviously it'll be 16 a day. And then once you get down to your desired uh, body fat percentage, you'll usually have between four and six a day just for good health. Yeah. Okay, because most of us don't get anywhere near enough. Now, I know I'm getting into a lot of detail here, okay? But uh, why not? All right, yeah. <laughs> my take. Now, the other thing that you gotta look at with your meats, okay, is um, you should always be choosing grass-fed meats, okay? And free-range eggs, those kind of things make a big difference, okay? So if you yeah. compare, um, basically the quality of the meat you have uh, is very, very important. And if you wanna understand the quality of the meat, basically you gotta to look to the quality of the life the animal had, okay? So if a chicken was cooped up um, in a little cage and uh, stressed out all the time, you know, the eggs aren't going to be as uh, nutritious as the ones from chicken that roamed free in a paddock and, you know, ate normal food. Yeah. All right. So you're actually going to get better nutrition from better quality. So for example, a grass fed beef will have far more omega three in it uh, than um, uh, more, I guess, what's the word aggressively farmed beef or whatever, or, you know, beef that was fed, um, you know, crap basically. And yeah. that's really, really important for A, our health and B, our results, which are interrelated, obviously. Okay. So that's a big one to look out for. Uh, and the other big one that's going to affect your results a lot is your sleep. So how's your sleep? Um, normally pretty good. Okay. So you wake up feeling good? Yeah. Yep. Nice face. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Um, in saying that, you know, there's probably things you could do to make it uh, potentially even better. Have you got a, a nighttime routine of unwinding and relaxing before bed or is it just... Um, yeah, pretty much. Just yep. watch TV, I guess. Okay. Cool. 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 So if you're sleeping well, no problem. Um, for most people, if they watch TV and then go to sleep, their sleep is going to be suboptimal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it's possible also that you just get used to suboptimal and you think it's okay now. Does that make sense? Like you just kind of get used to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if possible, you know, um, ideally you don't look at a TV or a screen for an hour before you go to bed. Okay. Okay. Uh, basically there's a, a blue light that, that gets emitted from screens, which affects, you know, even if you are getting to sleep, it might be affecting the depth of your sleep. Yeah. And sleep is where basically all our hormones get reset and um, hormones and fat loss are like um, peas in a pod. Okay. If our hormones aren't in an ideal state, our body's not going to be able to uh, work efficiently and get great results. Okay. So I think I've just given you about a thousand little things there to work on. Um, yeah, cool. Okay. So, the next part is just putting them into action and being consistent with them. Okay. Um, do you have any questions on any of that stuff? Yeah. Pardon? Any questions on any of that stuff? Um, no, I think I'm all right for now, but yeah. Just so you've got plenty of things to work on. Yeah. And uh, the main thing is focus on getting lean and then build muscle. And then build, yeah, right. Yeah. It's much faster than trying to do both at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Cool. All right, Rose, that's that's here Thank for you. Thank you very much. No worries, mate. And if anything else pops into your head, sing out. Rose, what is it that you want help with today? Oh, uh, I don't have, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, no, I don't really have any questions. I'm just here to listen. Oh, so, cool. Have you yeah. learned something so far? Yes, um, yeah. about what? the better quality meat mm. um, and how that impacts our health and then also sleep, which I knew anyway. Yeah, but. yeah. We all know that, right? It's, but we still, we still do silly things like... Yeah. Um, drink coffee in the afternoon and stay out watching tv blah blah, blah. yeah yeah all right especially that world cup cricket night they put it it's on so late because it's in england it's like messes like one more over one more over no <laughs> all right nige have you got any questions mate yeah i think you've pretty much answered most of mine i'm pretty much in the same boat as neil just wanting to shred that last bit of fat before I start toning. Yep. Um, but one thing I did pick up, like you mentioned about the no carbs and the brekkie, should mm. I apply that as well? 100%, yeah. Yep. So in a perfect world, everyone would do that. Um, the reason we don't for the challenge, like understand when we design the program for the challenge, it's all about, it's kind of uh, a mass recommendation based on what's going to be best for the most people. And most people coming into that challenge have uh, a lot of bad habits. One of the main ones is that they consume a lot of carbs, right? Yeah. And if we try and take someone from zero to a hundred overnight, typically compliance goes to zero. In other words, they throw the towel in because they're finding it too hard to follow the plan. Yeah. Yeah, so that still because obviously some of us trainers here in Ipswich are mm. on the six week challenge. Yes, but not technically on the challenge, but yeah, yeah just yeah. doing it with the client. But yeah, so drop drop my carbs for brekkie. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, I would definitely. Yeah, yeah. so I'm ninety nine percent confident that you fall in the eighty percent of uh, people yeah. that will do better on very low carbs. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, so for for me in a day, for example, uh, I'll have one cup of rice. Okay. That's the only carbs I I have yeah. on a consistent basis. Obviously, yep. you get a little bit in the veggies that you eat and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, you do not need carbs to yeah. have energy. Because I've I've changed. This is obviously our fifth week, so I've changed the brekkies up this week. I've been having smoothies the last couple of weeks. Yep. And especially the last week or so, I'm really talking to Chantel yesterday, really getting hungry between meals and especially mid-afternoon. Mm -hmm. So next week, I'm going to the omelettes and um, like your savory turkey, turkey muffins and whatnot that are in the recipe book. Okay. So the meats and eggs for bread. Yeah. Cool. Veggies. Yep. 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 So just keep the carbs out. And, and I would also try, I give the meat and nuts breakfast a try. Yep. It's a well-researched uh, breakfast. It's my go-to. Yep. Six out of seven days. So instead, oh, of, um, so instead of using avocado for brekkie, use nuts. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yes, because it has choline in it and that will give you more drive. So it, it gives Very you cool. more mental drive throughout the day. So yep. for me, just as important as um, the body is the brain, you yep. know, like, well, because I want to perform highly mentally every day. Yeah, cool. Um, as we all do, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you get the best of both worlds with the meat and nuts. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm. What, what about, I mean, you've heard you talk to Neil before about training in the after. That's typically when I train, obviously, working Afternoon. the day. Yep. yep. So carbs for lunch or no? Dinner. I would put them at dinner. Yep. For two reasons. Uh, one is you're more insulin sensitive after a workout. So in other words, you produce less insulin yep. with that meal. Uh, and two is uh, carbs will actually... Um, help increase um what's the hormone i just can't think of having your mind blank but uh your sleep hormone okay help you sleep better yeah, okay cool basically yeah awesome so literally just carbs for dinner yeah yeah yep yep, yep. and Sweet. you know feel free to chuck into your black coffee a, a teaspoon of uh, coconut oil yep. is what i do and it helps um steady the release of the caffeine into your bloodstream so you get a longer high and, a, and less of a drop, but yep. also helps stabilize your blood sugar level. So that'll help you with your hunger. So you get cool. hungry when your blood sugar levels drop. 
Yep. Okay. And your blood sugar levels drop because before they drop, they rose. Okay. Mm -hmm. So your goal is to have steady blood sugar and you're going to have a better environment for burning fat. Yep. Awesome. But right. when you have your carbs at brekkie, for example, your blood sugar shoots up. And then when your blood sugar shoots up, your body produces insulin. Okay. Which job is to store that blood sugar and therefore your blood sugar drops. Yep. And that's when you get hungry. Cool. So you get less hungry by um, taking the carbs out of the morning. Yep. All right. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, man. That was pretty much it for me. Yeah. Work better. Okay. Cool. And make sure you, um, you, you know, you salt your foods like we we're talking about before. All those little yeah, things that, 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 down, yeah. that we know about drinking water and uh, yep. all of that good stuff. Um, awesome. And yeah, focus on dropping the fat first. Get your body fat percentage down, and then work on the more weight training to, to build the muscles up. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like a plan, Stan. Sure is a plan. All right. So now, um, one thing that I super duper, my pet hate in the whole entire world is wasting time. Okay. So in other words, I see this as a great use of my time. So long as you guys actually implement the things that we talk about. So, uh, I'm going to make a note in my diary and you guys are going to do the same. All right. For one week from today. Okay. One week. So what's that next Saturday? And before next Saturday, you guys each have to send me a message either before or on next Saturday about what you've implemented. Okay. So okay. whether you've implemented everything or two or three things or five things or whatever, I just want to know. And what that does is it greatly increases the chance that you actually do something. So with the, um, yep. with the meat thing, like mm. does it, um, cause I don't really, I'm just starting to read labels and stuff now. Mm -hmm. So how do I find out what, like the quality of meat that I'm Yeah, buying. good question. Good question. When you look at it, you'll go to the meat section of the supermarket and you'll see uh, it'll say, uh, if it is grass-fed, it'll say grass-fed. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's the words that I'll be looking for. With eggs, for example, you're always looking for free range. Yeah. Yeah. Organic is good, um, but labeling organic is kind of a gray area. People, you know, what yeah. is organic? You know, it's kind of a loose term that just gets thrown around a lot. So with the meats, definitely looking for grass fed. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's the main thing. So if the, if the animal's getting good quality food, like it's supposed to, that's what it's supposed to eat. Uh, then the quality of the meat's going to be much better. Okay, cool. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and which, uh, where are you from Rose? Ipswich. Oh, you're in Ipswich as well. We had, I think we had Teresa there before, uh, but her thing cut out and uh, looks like she maybe uh, didn't get back on. But that's cool. All right. Um, okay, great. Any more questions, guys? Any more questions? Um, is there a particular nut that you recommend? Mm. Like, good question. I'll I recommend. like almonds probably the best. So. Almonds are good. Yeah, almonds are good. I would rotate them though. Uh, so yeah. hey, actually you bring up a good point, um, particularly on your protein sources, you need to rotate them occasionally so that your body doesn't develop food intolerances. Okay. So for example, if you're having the meat for breakfast, like I do at least one morning a week, I'll have eggs. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then occasionally I'll get, um, like veal as the meat instead of, uh, beef. So. Yeah. You know, you know, probably two days out of a fortnight or something like that, I'll have veal or a different uh, meat in the morning, different red meat. So it doesn't have to be every day changing stuff. And in fact, most people get better results by just sticking to very similar and just getting into a habit. Okay. So um, there's a saying that I really love. First, we create our habits and then they create us. Okay. So in other words, if you can keep it pretty structured, it generally is much easier to follow, but yeah, you can change the, the meats um, is a, is a good thing to do occasionally. 
Uh, and and this, I'd say the same with the nuts. So what I do is I get uh, cashews and pistachios and I put them, this is so sitting at my desk here. I just always have them sitting there. And that way every morning after I have my steak, I'll just have a handful of pistachios and cashews. So I get a bit of variety there in the same day. Make sense? Yep. Yep. Yep, and the same with our veggies. Obviously, we want to have a, a range of different veggies um, yeah. so that we're getting all the different micronutrients from them. So different colors, etc. But typically, a lot of green veggies uh, is the basis and then a few different colorful ones to spice up your life a little bit. What, um, uh, what sort of meals do you have for breakfast with meat in it? Mm, uh, meat. I literally, <laughs> I literally have like, steak, <laughs> I literally have like steak and broccoli and then yeah. nuts pretty much every morning. Yeah. Okay. And that works for me. Like that's, that's the ideal. Other people will have to change it. Like we have this construct and we've been told since we were little that certain foods are for breakfast, mm. certain foods are for lunch, certain foods are for dinner. But why? Mm. Just because somebody told us. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Um, you know, and uh, Fruit Loops and whatnot is no longer an acceptable, you know, like eating cereal. We now know even the ones that are marketed as healthy, we know that they're actually not good for us, right? For 90% of people anyway. Uh, some people do very well on high carbs, but uh, that's not very many. And it's um, even less when it comes to people with fair skin like all of us. Because our ancestors grew up, you know, away from the equator uh, where grain didn't grow, right? And we ate mostly meat. So we had high protein, high fat diets, all of our ancestry, right? Uh, people that lived closer to the equator, you know, if your ancestors are closer to the equator, which means you would have dark skin, right? Uh, they ate a lot more grains and a lot more carbs because that's what was more prevalent in their environment. So their genome, their genetics develop differently to ours. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Hmm. So every human is an individual, but there are basic principles that will um, work for the majority of people. And then we have individual things that need to be tweaked. You know, some people thrive better with X and some people thrive better with Y, but mostly we're similar. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. Um, what was the question again, Rose? I can't remember. Oh, what do you eat for breakfast? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah, think of dinner foods and just think, well, any of those could be breakfast, right? Mm. Yeah. That's true. It's Meat very and true. Meat and veggies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you also don't have to eat the minute you wake up. Mm -mm. Right. Which is another big thing. You know, we, we got told, Oh, you gotta eat breakfast straight away or you going to die or something. I don't know. Um, but for a lot of people uh, not eating until mid morning or even lunchtime on some days or even the majority of the days works well for them mm -hmm. as well. So um, yeah, that's another thing that uh, changes from individual to individual. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. Okay. Any more questions guys? Yeah, oh, got one Oh, oh, you go, Rose. Right. No, 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 you go. Oh, oh no, you go. Uh, <laughs> you go, you go. <laughs> um, protein. I've been thinking about upping my protein a little bit this week, bro, from mm -hmm. the 170 to like 200. Is that mm -hmm. going to be any benefit or? Um, well, possibly. You'll probably find that it increases a little bit now anyway because of, um, I'd say, yeah, like 200 is not over the top for yeah. you or what you're in the nineties somewhere kilos. Almost. Okay. So you're sitting right on about a hundo. Yeah. 101. Okay, cool. He's going to crack, crack it. it. Don't crack it, man. Don't do it. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So typically um, what there's something like 2.3 pounds in a kilo. Is that right? 2.2. 2.2. Like okay. So um, a rule of thumb is, you know, whatever your goal weight is in pounds, make that your uh, daily grams of protein. Okay. 
So in other words, uh, you're right now you're at about 220 pounds. Okay. So let's say you want to get to 90, that would take you to somewhere like 195 um, grams of protein a day. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, increasing a little bit for you will be fine. Cool. Definitely. Uh, and, and like always, make sure you get good quality. But by reducing the carbs that we we're talking about before, you probably find that you naturally get a little bit more anyway. Yep. So you might have an extra egg in the brekkie or um, increase the size of your, your lunchtime protein a little bit. Yep. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Cool. No worries. Uh, Rose? Oh, okay. So, Nige, you might be able to help me out with this one because um, you're one of my trainers, so I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay, so since we started the open weights mm -hmm. gym, mm -hmm. um, so my muscles have decreased, but I've mm. started, I've noticed um, recently that, my, like, muscles in my arms, I mean, mm -hmm. but then they've picked up again, which is good because I started the weight session. Mm -hmm. um, but my I have muscle in my right arm but not in my left arm so what do you recommend to focus on my left arm mm. like okay. like literally just focusing on my left arm yeah no um what you will do though is increase the number of exercises that you do um unilaterally which means uh less barbells more dumbbells for example okay so uh, if you're doing barbell overhead press and barbell bench press and barbell rows, for example, your strong arm can easily push out more than your weak arm. Yeah. So instead of doing a barbell row on your next workout, you'll do kettlebell rows. So you'll do, you know, each weights in each hand. So it'll okay. be the same weight. And over time, over the course of four to six weeks, the two will even themselves out. Okay, cool. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, so it's uh, a simple solution just for at least four weeks. Every bit of weights that you do, do it, uh, every bit of upper body weights anyway, do it with a weight in each hand. Okay, so cool. In instead of pressing a barbell overhead, you'd get two kettlebells and you'd do the same movement and one arm will find it easier than the other, but it'll, it'll force it to catch up. Yeah. <coughs> You could, of course, uh, if it's your left arm weaker, you said, or smaller. Yeah. 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 You could even at the end do a few extra. Yeah. All right. That would be no problem. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Cool. All right. Uh, cool. Any more questions? Just with the lunch, is, is that the same as breakfast? Um, well, you don't want to make it exactly the same because you want to increase your base of uh, nutrients. Um, so for example, yeah, but it follows the same principles. So meat and vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. Same principles, but I wouldn't recommend the same food. So maybe you, have chicken for lunch or. Yeah. So yeah, you could do that or you could keep, keep with your tuna and just take the rice out and, you know, tuna and veggies. Tuna salad, salad. Yeah. Yep. 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 Tuna, tuna salad. Um, chicken salad, you know, literally and, any, any combination of meat and vegetables. And nuts or no nuts with lunch? Uh, it's not going to kill you. You can definitely have some. Yep. Yep. Oh, did you hear that? No, that dropped out again. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely have some nuts with your lunch. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, nuts are not so good. Like anything, uh, again, you know, have some variety. Um, yeah. You know, they are something that some people can just overeat because they just kind of sit there and you just eat them all day. Um, yeah. So just kind of keep it structured to the meals. A, a small handful of nuts with a meal is yeah. going to be a good thing for you. Yeah. Especially if you're having chicken. Uh, because chicken will be, or turkey or anything, that will be leaner, less fat in it. Um, yeah. Then you can add nuts in, so you've got a, another fat source into your meal. But if you're having tuna, for example, you probably don't need it, the nuts, because yeah. the tuna, right. tuna is a high-fat uh, food. Mm. Cool. And generally speaking, guys, also um, fish is a great protein source for when you are trying to lose weight. And if you don't like fish, don't eat it. 
<laughs> so I'll if you don't, you on that too. yeah, if you don't like fish, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's a case of, you know, what's, you know, if you, if you, if it's going to, yeah, fish oil is, is almost like every single person should have fish oil. So, um, uh, Ideally, our omega-3 to omega-6 ratio is as one as to one, as in for every gram of omega-3 we have, we should have, uh, sorry, every gram of omega-6 we have, we should have one gram of omega-3. Now, a typical Western diet has one as to 20, okay? So 20 times more omega-6 than omega-3, and omega-6 is really inflammatory. Basically, it's really bad for us, and it's one of the major reasons why uh, things like cancer and all these diseases uh, uh, um, so prevalent now because our diets have created an environment for um, disease, basically. So omega sixes come from grains and 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 um, so uh, you know a grain based diet, okay, is high in omega six. So lots of wheat and uh, all those kind of things, um, it, which is if you think about what we used to be told with the food pyramid and whatnot, eat all the bread and the cereals and blah, 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 low fat. Uh, that's basically a really high omega-6 diet. And that's why that ratio got so out of whack. Mm -hmm. So omega-3 is really, really critical. Like literally every person in the world, um, very few people get enough omega-3 from natural sources. And if you think about the meat that we eat now compared to the meat our ancestors ate, three or 400 years ago. Um, the only meat back then was free range grass fed meat, wasn't it? Mm. And, you know, because there wasn't farms, <laughs> you had to go and hunt the animal. Um, whereas now the quality of, of our foods is far diminished. All the vegetables they ate so long ago had, um, there was a study, I can't remember the exact number, but they, they did this study in France on oranges and they tested um, the nutrients in oranges today compared to oranges about, I think it was like 40 or 50 years ago. And it found there was 44 times less micronutrients in today's oranges than back then. Because we farm the food so intensively, the soil is nowhere near the same quality. Mm. Right? So um, a bit like the animals, the quality of our food has diminished. So, always looking for like the, the good quality um, veggies and meats, et cetera, is going to make a big difference. And uh, ultimately it actually doesn't make that much of a difference price wise. You know, you're talking like probably 20, 25 bucks a week for most people, but the difference in outcome is significant. Yeah. Right. Mm. So mm -hmm. always good quality food. It's like, if you had a Ferrari, would you put the, you know, cheap yeah. fuel in it or would you put only the premium in it and you know because we value that really highly now if we value ourselves really highly we're far more important than a ferrari so make sure we put the good stuff in make sense cool yep. yeah. cool any other questions popping into anyone's head I've got one more super quick one. One yep. of my challenges has just finished um, the challenge a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Big dude, 160 kilos. Um, didn't see great results over the mm -hmm. challenge. I'm now after what we spoke about here today. I'm wondering if that is because of the carbs. Could be. Post challenge, would it be acceptable to get him to swap, drop those carbs out, lunch and dinner for a couple yeah, of weeks? Yeah, only acceptable, but definitely do it. Yeah. So the right. thing is. Um, uh, to get to that point, he spent probably the last 10 or 20 years uh, with bad habits. Yeah. And when you're that overweight, your body becomes very insulin resistant. Okay. Yep. So that means now whenever he has a little bit of carbs, his body produces a lot of insulin. All right. Insulin goes straight up. And when insulin is high, our body can't burn fat for fuel. Okay. So therefore, he's going to have a hard time burning fat. Yep. But once he takes the carbs out, insulin levels drop. I'd also be making sure he's on the fish oil protocol yeah. Yep. and smashing fish oil. Now, at his body fat percentage, it's going to be crazy to take one gram per percentage, but I'd have him on in 20 grams a day. Yep. Okay, so four after every meal. 
And that's that's one tablet is one gram. Correct. Uh, yeah. Some tablets are more than one, but it'll say on the label. Yeah. Nine I, times out of ten. Yeah, it'll, thousand, thousand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'll say a thousand milligrams, for example. Yeah. That's one gram. Okay. Yeah. But there are some tablets that are two thousand milligrams. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. They awesome. Look like horse tablets. I don't know how yeah, people. Could, yeah. Because there's been a couple <laughs> of challenges that are, well, one's due to finish in a couple of weeks, up around the 140 kilos as well, and haven't seen great results. Like yeah. To see. Yeah, so it's interesting. You'd, you'd expect them to get better results, but sometimes yep. they don't because their bodies uh, are so damaged in a way. Mm. Yeah. So if you had a car that had been <clears throat> used for 50 years, it would take you longer to get it back on the road than yep. a car that just needed a puncture patched up. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. So you just explain. Phone call getting made Monday. Yeah, great. Yeah, explain that to them, and you know, ex yeah. you just explain to them. Hey, I actually um, was talking about you with uh, Jake, and talking yep. about how I can better help you, etc. And I've got some some great stuff for you now. Yeah. You know? So that awesome. way, not only going to give them the help that they need, but they're also going to feel appreciated that you know, yep. you go feel the love, feel the love. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, and it's something to put in your back pocket when someone's not improving. Yep. Um, take the carbs out. Yep. Yeah. And Close now down. it doesn't have to be forever. So the leaner you become, the more carbs you can reintroduce into your yep. body, especially when you go to um, build muscle. When it's time to build muscle again, you'll increase those carbs a bit. Yeah. Okay. Not a, not a huge amount. You won't go to the food pyramid style, but for example, you'll add some carbs into your lunch and you'll add some carbs into your post-workout shake. All right. And, and that'll actually help you because when you're leaner, you are more insulin sensitive. So that means your body doesn't produce as much insulin every time you eat carbs, which means you can, you can use the carbs for fuel and, and yeah, you'll get a better workout done. For example, you'll recover better, etc. but you won't get, um, you won't get the same insulin spike, which is what stops the fat burning. Yeah, cool. That makes sense. Awesome. So, so when people say, oh, this is the best food plan, this is the best nutrition plan or diet plan, for who? Because everybody's different. All right. So that's where you got to understand. There's no one best thing. And that's why it's confusing because everyone reads articles on the internet and whatnot, which are just very general, right? as opposed to what's best for you is different because your goals are different. Your body is different. Your genetics are different, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Cool. Okay. Yep. Any more questions? Oh. All right. Everyone happy? Yep. Cool. Yep. Quick high five to finish off. Mm. High five. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks, great thanks. questions today. Hope that was valuable for you. And um, yeah, we're going to have a Q and a every month for the next few months as a bit of a test to see if we can get it to catch on. Yeah. And um, yeah, so uh, tune in for the next one. And we'll, we'll let you know when it is real soon. Awesome. Awesome. Right. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Bye.